Hello, everybody, and welcome to part D of exercise one. I believe this is exercise one. Yes. Okay, we're looking at page 34 of the workbook, and the instructions of this exercise are on the previous page. It's giving us a vector space, in this case, the set of all two by two matrices, and they'd like us to find a basis for the subspace W. Okay, W is being given as the set of symmetric two by two matrix over R. Now, I don't know if we've discussed this term yet, what it, what it means for a matrix to be symmetric. Okay, some of you might already know what this is, but I'm, I'm betting the term is new for a lot of you. So let's turn the page here a minute and just discuss what that means before we dive into this example. Okay, so let's say it this way, a square matrix A is symmetric if it's equal to its own transpose. In other words, if you can take the mat matrix and transpose it and get the same matrix back again. So for example, um, A equals 1, 3, 3, negative 4. That's a symmetric matrix. How would we check that? Well, we'd, we'd take the transpose of A Okay, which would be, we're just going to take the rows and the columns and flip them. So the first row, 1, 3, becomes our first column. And then the second row becomes our second column. And notice that that gives us the same matrix that we started with. Okay, what would an example of a matrix that's not symmetric be? Well, how about um, 1, 2, 3, 4? Okay, because of the fact that if we took the transpose of that matrix, we would get one, two, three, four, the rows become the columns, and that's not the same as the matrix that we started with. Okay, so what is it what kind of what does it take for a two by two matrix to be symmetric? What made this work was the fact that the two off diagonal entries had to be the same. The fact that those numbers were the same is what made this a symmetric matrix. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back, see if we can do this example. Um, so a way of writing kind of generally the set of symmetric matrix, matrices is to notice that a matrix two by two is gonna be symmetric if it has this form, A, B, B, C, okay, where A, B, and C can be an R. Again, what's important is that those two numbers be the same for this to be symmetric. Okay, and we recall again that we have a nice process for finding a basis for a vector space if we can write it as the span of a set of vectors. So we'd like to take this description of W and see if we can rewrite it as a span of a set of matrices. Okay, we can use the same kind of general algebraic technique that we did before. Take this two by two matrix and to split it into pieces. Okay, so starting with the A piece. Okay, we've got an A in the upper left hand corner. We've got B's on the off diagonal. And we've got a C in the lower right hand corner. Okay, notice that that's equivalent to what we wrote above. We just kind of took this description of this two by two matrix and split it into three parts. Okay, and then notice um, we can rewrite this again as the set of all A times one zero zero plus B times zero one one zero. We're just factoring out those parameters basically. And we notice that by doing that, we've, we've essentially written W as the span of these three matrices, okay, that I'm underlining. Okay, so that is equal to the span of beta, where beta is just the set containing those three matrices. Okay, now the question is, is that beta a basis? Okay, so we, we know that beta spans our vector space, but we would also like to confirm that that's a linearly independent set. 
Okay, now there's one other little difficulty that sort of comes into this problem that I don't know that we've run across before. If the vectors that we had in this set were tuples, we have a nice way of deciding whether tuples are linearly independent computationally. We would take those tuples, form a matrix, and figure out what the pivot columns are. But in this case, our vectors are not tuples, they're matrices. So we kind of have to go back to the definition of linear independence to answer this question here. Okay, remember, linear independence is about forming a linear combination. Okay, of our vectors. So I'm going to form a linear combination of the three vectors that we have here. And set that equal to the zero vector, which in our vector space would just be the zero matrix. And what it comes down to is deciding whether or not we have um, non-trivial solutions to this system. Okay, so let's see, let's solve it. There are a lot of zeros in our matrices, so this shouldn't be too hard. If we do the algebra on the left-hand side, kind of consolidate that into one matrix, here's what we get. C1, C2, C2, and C3. You can check my algebra. All, all I did was I added up okay, this expression that we have here. And on the right, we've got 0, 0, 0, 0. But if that statement is true, then all of these entries that we have here have to be zero. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a true statement. And that tells us that C1, C2, and C3 are all equal to zero. Okay, so what we've demonstrated then is that this equation has only the trivial solution. What does that mean in terms of linear dependence and independence? Well, that means that the three matrices that we have are linearly independent. Okay, so let's say it this way. If we maybe give that um, equation a name. Okay, so since star has only the trivial solution, beta is linearly independent. I'm going to use the abbreviation li for linearly independent. And we've just confirmed that beta is therefore a basis. Okay, and the dimension, again, is just the number of vectors in the basis. There are three matrices in our set, and so three has to be our dimension in this case.